Memorial Day is a time that we remember those who passed. This includes those who fell in combat and those who lost their lives due to the emotional scars of war. Today, we're going to put a face on the veteran suicide epidemic. I'm Tiffany Cloud, host of The Storm. Thank you for watching today on WYLN TV 35. I'm honored to be joined in studio today by parents of a veteran from our area. He served his country honorably in combat, then made it home, only to fight a different kind of battle, an emotional battle on the home front, a fierce battle, and one he did not win. This is an important show you won't want to miss. We'll be right back. The Storm on WYLN TV 35 is sponsored by Atlantic Carbon Group PLC. Pull it. There are lots of things you can pull, but what's the most fun? Pulling parts at Harry's You Pull It, the world's largest auto salvage yard. Pull it. Pull it. Come visit any of their three convenient Harry's You Pull It locations, Hazleton, Allentown, Pennsburg, and Pull It. Pocono Raceway is summertime, where the kids are free, where fans become friends, where good times roll, and the racing is always a little tricky. Bring your friends, bring your family, just bring it, Pocono style. New this year, the Great Pocono Raceway Air Show. Make the beer stop, your stop for the best selection of beer in the area. Over 450 types of beer, a huge variety of styles to please everyone's tastes. Over 150 microbrews, including hard to find beers. Over 100 German and Belgian beers and frozen daiquiris to go. Do you like trying new beers? Make your own six pack at the beer stop with a large assortment of single bottles. The beer stop is open until midnight every day, all year long. Make the beer stop, your stop. 16 North Broad Street in West Hazleton. In a world where an instant tweet can create a firestorm of news coverage, WYLN is moving with the times, allowing for more instant reporting of breaking news on television and on social media, as well as regular hourly news updates. News gets out faster than ever before, and WYLN brings it all to you. Live weekdays at 5.30 only on WYLN, where your local network. Welcome back to The Storm. I'm joined today by Sarah and Mike Wargo, parents from our area whose son served honorably in war, only to come home and have to battle the emotional scars of war. And unfortunately, he lost that battle. I'm so honored and privileged that you both came on today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank for, you for the for invitation. invitation. This is not an easy topic, um, suicide at all. Uh, veteran suicide is a subject that I speak about on a regular basis. We have a, an epidemic in this nation every sure. 65 minutes of veterans taking his or her own life. Uh, we need to do work to quash the stigma of yes. post-traumatic stress educate people on uh, traumatic brain injury. I appreciate you bravely coming on today to share a bit of your story and your son's story. So thank you. You're welcome. It's been our mission. Yeah. Yes, and well, and you, you raised a son who, who had a great mission and served this country honorably. And I, I truly, I, I think what you're doing in his memory to take this tragic situation and try to turn it into a positive in some way to help yeah. others is, is such a noble thing, so thank you. I want to start by going back in time and having you share with us a bit about your son prior to war. What was he like? What was his essence like? Would you describe him as happy? Yes. He, he was happy, he, but he was a quiet happy. He wasn't... Uh, he had his own type of sense of humor, mm -hmm. and his friends knew him well through his humor, but um, never expected him 
to do anything but go to college and get married and have children. Never expected him to enlist in the military. You didn't expect it. No. So you were surprised as well? He, we were because yeah. when we went fishing, he would want to know if he caught a fish if he could throw it back, would it still live? Mm -hmm. You know, he was that type of person and uh, he never went hunting with me even though I was a big hunter when I was younger. He never seemed to be interested in hunting or killing anything. So when he told us that night that he joined the United States Army, it really sat us back because that wasn't the Michael that we knew for right. the last. Because he had been studying in the sciences and pharmaceutical. He went to school to be a doctor. Okay. He was in the biology pre-med program wow. on a scholarship. So total shockeroo. Yeah. Hey, mom, dad, I want to join the United States military. This was post 9-11. Right after 9-11. Right after 9-11. Okay, so right he out. was obviously, whether he talked about it or not, he was clearly deeply affected that he decided yes. to enlist. Yes. yes. So he then went where? Where was he deployed to and for how long? Well, first he went to uh, Fort Leonard Wood. Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri for his boot, tra uh, mm -hmm. boot training. And then he was deployed to Afghanistan. Okay. And he told us about scenes in his friends dying around him that he said nobody should have to see. Sure. He lost 10 of his best buddies that he bunked with. 10. 10, ten, ten in what? 10 months. Who was he serving with? What was his group called? 287. Mm -hmm. 10th Mountain Division. Tenth Mountain oh, he was Division. with the 10th Mountain yes. Division. Yeah. Okay. He was uh, very proud of that. Yes. From New York. Yeah. Yes, very mm -hmm. familiar with them. Okay. So, mm -hmm. yes, they, they suffered a great number yeah. of losses uh, mm -hmm. throughout the, the war in Afghanistan. Yeah. So he, he lost many brothers in yes. arms. Yes. Um, Violent deaths, and he saw them die. Mm -hmm. And seven of them, those that died in this helicopter crash that he saw, he was supposed to be on that helicopter. So he had a tremendous survivor guilt yes. that he didn't know how to live with. Right. So he comes home from war, mm -hmm. and obviously anybody who comes home from combat is changed for forever. He was yes. clearly changed. Yes. He had seen horrible things. He had to do, I'm sure, very difficult things, life and death situations you're dealing with. What was he like when he was, came home compared to what he was like before he went? cold. He, his mm. demeanor was cold. I remember I had fallen and I had a terrible cut on my leg and I said, what do you think, Michael? Should I go to the ER for stitches? And his response was, take Tylenol and drink water. Mm -hmm. Michael, prior to serving in the military, would have taken me to the ER for stitches. So right then, and I knew the moment he came home, he was different. He was disconnected. I could feel it. He was emotionally yes. disconnected. Yes. He was different, and I assumed, well, he just came back from war, but he's going to be disconnected. Yeah. But Sally, as a mom, knows that he was different in different ways, other than just yeah. being, you know, on the outside appearance. And his wife, too, said it was like a switch, mm -hmm. that the Michael that she married four weeks before he deployed wasn't the Michael who came home. Was he isolating a lot and yes. self-medicating? No, he didn't self-medicate. Okay, because that's common, but isolation. But he, this, is, this is what he did. They bought, they bought their first home, and he made the basement into a Michael room. It was only for Michael. That was his escape to go to the basement. He had his computer there. He, had, he, he loved working out. He was very athletic, very strong, and that is where he would work on his gym equipment, um, he set up a poker table. He liked to play poker with some of his friends. Um, it was a non-Julie room. <laughs> the no the, right, yes. so yes, so that was his space, yes. was nobody his space, else right, into his yeah. space, yes. and he could control the oh, circumstances yes. in that space, yes. mm -hmm. but he didn't have to interact with yes. others when he was down there, yes. and he spent a lot of time there. Yes, and he was a teacher, so he, he was occupied very much during the day with his job as okay. a teacher, and then at night he would prepare, but there was a time where he needed to be alone, mm -hmm. just Michael. It's interesting to hear, though, that he was able to work. Oh, yes. Uh, because mm -hmm. some people aren't necessarily. Mm -hmm. Some people isolate so much that they can't even work. So he was at least able to get out and work and be around people during the course of the day to teach, but then he would come home, and as you said, he would isolate. I certainly would speculate that that had a great effect on his marriage, isolating. Terrible effect. 
I became very close with his wife because while he was deployed, she and I would spend a weekend a month together, either at a spa or shopping and dinner or the movies, and we became friends, not just in-laws. And when he came home, I noticed the difference. She immediately noticed the difference, and um, I was I was very concerned. Every time I'd bring up his attitude or his his pushing us away, he would just push us away further. Mm -hmm. So I had to weigh my battles with Michael. Sure, and you probably felt as at a loss as to how to advise her or what yeah. even to do. Yeah, we even went down specifically one weekend and uh, they went shopping and I was supposed to talk to Michael, go out for a beer or two and just, uh, you know, is there something you want to open up with or you want to talk about? And he just shut me out. He was just he was angry. The, he was angry that we would even try to do something like that. Mm -hmm. It was like an intervention we yeah. set up, and and he wanted no part of it. Well, sure. And mm -hmm. we're we're about to go to break, but a lot of times we know combat veterans. They're tough guys, and they think that opening up is a sign of weakness. It's actually not, but they mm -hmm. think so. We're going to come back and talk more. We'll be right back okay. on the storm. The storm on WYLN TV 35 is sponsored by Atlantic Carbon Group PLC. Tri-County has been keeping your office up to speed since 1969. Everything your office needs, office supplies, personal and custom business forms, business cards, office furniture, new and used office equipment, copy, print and scan solutions with wide format capabilities. Leasing is also available. Free off-street parking and free local delivery. Tri-County Business Machines, 117 East Broad Street in Hazleton, 570-459-0754. Family owned and operated since 1969. Go hog wild for Iron Pigs Baseball. WYLN is televising the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs live. America's favorite pastime on your local network, WYLN TV 35. See the stars of tomorrow at Coca-Cola Park. Don't miss any of the games here on WYLN TV 35. Visit WYLNTV.com for a complete Iron Pigs schedule. Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs on WYLN, your home for live sports. I'm Officer Scott Savitt, and this is CopCam, a wireless security camera smaller than one square inch, so you can hide it anywhere to record anything, anytime motion is detected. CopCam shoots an incredible high definition and includes a powerful microphone to record perfect audio. With a motion sensor, it only records when it needs to. Then simply upload to your computer, call now, and you can get CopCam for only two easy payments of $19.99. Order now, and we'll upgrade you to our CopCam Elite with six built-in infrared LEDs to record even at night. We'll also send you our swivel clip to turn your cop cam into the best dash cam, body cam, or action sports cam. And it's free. And finally, an eight gigabyte memory card, also free. Call or click now and you can double the offer. Just pay a separate fee. You can get all this, but you have to order now. Call 1-800-984-0790 or visit by copcam.com. So call 1-800-984-0790 now. Life in the Monastery, the new CD by the Sisters of Holy Annunciation Monastery, can be yours for only $18, which includes shipping and tax. Mail a check to Holy Annunciation Monastery, 403 West County Road, Sugar Loaf, Pennsylvania, 18249, or call 570-78-1205. This fantastic CD can be yours for only $18. Watch off the beaten path on WYLN TV 35 and discover the Pennsylvania you never knew existed. Welcome back to the storm. Every day we lose 20 veterans to suicide. It's very upsetting. Uh, today we put a face on the suicide epidemic for veterans. Uh, Sarah and Mike Wargo are parents of a veteran who took his own life a few years ago when he came home from war. He battled the emotional yes, he war at home. 
the yes. emotional war at home. You, you used the word cold to describe how he was when he was home. And, and you and I were talking at break how being cold is kind of a survival mechanism, certainly yes. while you are at war. You're seeing so much death and so much ugliness. Eventually, you just have to emotionally shut down, but then they stay that way when they get home, and reconnecting is so very difficult. You told me at break that while he did teach, he, he had several jobs, that his marriage eventually suffered, that the disconnection just continued. Was there a moment or anything that you said, oh my goodness, something's going to happen, or was his taking his life a shock to you both? Before he actually took his life, <clears throat> we had hopes because he started dating his wife again. Okay. And we said, oh, well, thank God, they're going to get back together. His daughter is going to have a mommy and daddy in the same house. This is great. Mm -hmm. And then it just didn't work out, and he took his life, and it was devastating. You told me at break he actually arranged, he, he taped a video he prior to killing himself, and he arranged for the video to be sent to you after his death. Yes. Yes. We didn't know that, though. When we saw the video, we immediately shut off the computer, locked the doors, and drove to death. He was in Delaware. Did he give you any, ins any insights as to why he felt it was so hopeless and it just couldn't be turned around? There's no cure for PTSD is his quote. Yeah, he said at the end of the video, yeah. and please don't say, that's why he's going to be mad at us, please don't say that I had PTSD because I looked into it and he says there's no cure for it anyhow. And he says there's a lot of bad people in this world. You're always going to need our military, so please don't say that I had PTSD because it gives soldiers a stigma or a bad name. He pleaded with us, don't say that I had that. And, and many veterans yes. are so ashamed to have post-traumatic stress, but there is nothing to be ashamed of. How can you not have stress? How can you not have PTSD? Yes. To me, it's a sign of being normal. To me, how yes. can you not be traumatized by seeing death and by having to kill and live through yes. the horror and the smell and the blood and the fire and the just... The ugliness that is war, yes. to me, coming home and having PTSD is a sign of normalcy. Yes. Mm -hmm. To me. You should expect that. But but yet to the veteran, they're, they're so ashamed. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and so let's talk, though. We want to turn this horrid situation, if we can, into something positive for those out there watching. Yeah. What can we do? First of all, we need to quash the stigma of yes. post-traumatic yes. stress. Yes. Yes. What can we do, though, to, to help change the course of things? Because there, there, there are ways of, of helping veterans. It isn't as hopeless as perhaps he thought it was at the time. Correct. I've often said that <clears throat> our government spends so much time and money preparing our boys and girls to go over and fight for our country. But when they come back, it's a thank you and a little pat on the back and, and a thank ya. you and see you. And maybe I understand they give like a quick exit interview. Well, and those guys can't wait to get out of that right. exit interview. They've Mike. been away for right. one, two, three, four years. They're not going <clears> to <throat> give any answers that's going to throw up a red flag that's going to delay them right. getting back to their families. That's bingo. You just hit yep. a huge what problem. What we need to do six months down the line, go back and interview that yeah. veteran go back and interview his spouse or his mom and dad, you're going to get different answers you then are. because he's yeah. now home, he's had time to rest and relax, then the problems are going to surface and then we could hopefully do something yes. then, but we have to identify it. And maybe another six months later down the line, go back and ask the, the veteran and his spouse or family members the same question. You're going to keep getting different answers and then the problem is going to come to the surface and you can't solve the problem if you don't know that there's a problem there. You have to identify it. And, yes. and Mike, you really, you really strike a, a chord with me because I experienced this with my own husband. When he came home from war, yeah, he sat through one of those sessions and it's like the government ticks the box. Yeah. Okay, we talked to them about what fine, they may yeah, be fine, going fine. through, signed the form, he couldn't wait to get home. Exactly. And, then, and then the struggle begins and the family is yes. trying to figure out how on earth do I handle what my loved one is going through. I haven't been to war, I don't know. So, so I think you're right. They prepare them so well to go, but they don't prepare them for the process of coming home. I think that is very well said, and hopefully members 
of Congress who are in the Veterans Administration um, Committee, the Veterans Committee, and, and others out there mm -hmm. are listening to this show because there, there is more that needs to be done. Yes, I've, I've heard people, important people, saying stuff along those lines, but I don't see anything really happening. It's, it's mm -hmm. obvious that, like you said, they're not going to give you true answers when they come back. Yes, they you just want to get home. They and, just want to get home. And I think the other thing that they need is you talked about isolation mm -hmm. and his having his own room, yes. space in the house, his yes. dungeon, if you will, that he, that he spent all this time in but they lose that peer-to-peer -peer bond. Yes. That bond is so important when they're downrange in combat and it's yes. important when they're going through training, but then they scatter to the four winds when they get home and that bond, and I think one of the things that helps veterans heal from my experience is talking to other veterans Correct. who have actually been through it. Yes. <coughs> because they're not going to. Your son probably wasn't gonna open up to you because mm -hmm. he would have thought, Mom, you will never even fathom or have an inkling of what I've been through. But if he were talking to a fellow combat mm -hmm. veteran, he might have been more apt to open up. So that yes. peer to peer support when they get home is so important as well. I mm -hmm. asked his commanding officer eight years after Michael uh, was released from the Army how the commanding officer remembered this deployment so well and remembered our son. And he told us it was the worst deployment of his career. And then I asked him if he had PTSD, and he was very quiet for a moment, and then he said, let me just tell you this, Mrs. Wargo, if I do have PTSD, I wouldn't tell my mother about it. Wow. Yes. Wow. Because they're, again, they're ashamed. Yes. They think it's a sign of weakness. Yes. They're embarrassed. They're afraid that they'll be punished if they're still enlisted in the military yes. they'll be punished by admitting it so they just mm -hmm. stamp they just tamp it down they hide it and the stigma stigma goes with them when they apply for jobs sure like Michael was a teacher do you honestly believe he would be able to go back into teaching if he was treated for PTSD I I don't think so well what people need to understand about PTSD too it doesn't mean he they're hunkering down, no. you know, uh, th no. some imaginary scenario. It's it's an anxiety disorder, it really, is. more than anything. It's just tremendous hypervigilance and anxiety is what mm -hmm. it is. Hypervigilance, that I saw in Michael, mm -hmm. even in a restaurant. Michael, I saw that in Michael. Michael says at one point in his video, which really floored us, he said he actually felt safer in Afghanistan than he did back here in the United States because he said he knew the guy on his left and the guy on his right had his back. He didn't have that security back here in America and I thought that was very disturbing that someone would say that he felt safer over there than back here. And I could kind of understand that though, too because that I talk about this a lot. Yeah. When, you, when you're in combat you fight for the guy to the right and yep. your left. You don't fight for yourself right. but here on the home front it's all about me, 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 me. Yes. And the community we all need to do a better job yes. looking out for the veterans when right. they get home from war. And with that, we're going to go to break. We'll be right back on The Storm. The Storm on WYLN TV 35 is sponsored by Atlantic Carbon Group PLC. Grubel's Georgetown Deli and Beer is more than just a great place to grab six packs to go. You can also enjoy great draft beer, including their exclusive Three Ornina Milk Stouts. Take it to go in a crowler or mix and match bottles of your favorite craft beers. Or just cool down with one of their slushies. Check out the Georgetown Pub Fair menu, including their Flight and Bites with your choice of sauces and five ounce draft beers. Stop in and play Kino or other Pennsylvania lottery games. Don't forget to check out their website and Facebook for tasting events. Krugel's Georgetown Deli and Beer in Wilkesbury Township right next to the Big Cow. Join us in this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. It's Good Posture Month, and Dr. John and Dr. Stacey are going to give you some great tips on how to keep your spine as healthy as it can be. That's coming up this week. Join us. The Whitetail Preserve Spring Trap Skeet League starts Tuesday, April 16th at 5 p.m. It is open to anyone who is above beginner stage in their skills. You can sign up at Whitetail any weekend leading up to the start date. Remember the kitchen is open on Tuesdays at 5, so no need to fret over dinner. 
The cost is $30 to sign up, and this will go towards league maintenance, prizes, and the banquet that will be held June 18th. Remember to follow Whitetail on Facebook, facebook.com slash whitetail dash preserve. WYLN has strong ties to the community and it's committed to important causes like the American Cancer Society and Helping Hand Society telethons. WYLN's commitment to Pennsylvania continues with the broadcast of Hazleton's Fun Fest Parade and the Christmas and St. Patrick's Day parades in Wilkes-Barre. In the summer, we broadcast the Weatherly and Giants to Spare Hill Climb. And throughout the year, we provide important community services through the broadcast of town meetings, school board meetings, election night coverage, and other community events. WYLN, we're your local network. Welcome back to The Storm. In the last segment, we talked about your son leaving a video behind before he took his life. And while at the time that must have been horrific, there was some good that came out of it. You were able to utilize this video to apply for benefits for his child. Yes, his daughter was six and a half when he died. And um, we took that video to a forensic psychiatrist. He watched it and determined Michael suffered terribly from PTSD. Uh, he wrote up a four-page diagnosis. The video and the diagnosis pages went to the VA in Philadelphia, and five weeks later, we received a letter from the VA, yes, Brianna would get her benefits. Because his death was service-related. Service related. Yes. And because of that designation, you are gold star parents. Yes, yeah. we are. But there are plenty of parents out there who perhaps don't have a video or a way to prove their mm -hmm. child clearly having post-traumatic stress and they're not necessarily getting those service-related benefits if there's a child left behind. Correct. That's true and it's unfortunate because they die just like our son died and it's so hard for them to prove. We, Michael gave us the evidence, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't have that evidence and unfortunately they're fighting we have benefits. tried to help some families that have reached out. Mike has kept great records of every form we completed for the VA. So you're trying and, to help and others. And we are encouraging them to reapply. Good. I'm glad and, you are. And some of them have and have received their benefits. I also want to tell people uh, there is a memorial in your son's uh, memory. And wh where is that? And if they would like to go visit it. The, the one that's in Lehighton, it's from Mission 22 and it's called the War at Home Memorial. We did this for awareness because um, we need to be aware of veterans suffering and suicide. So um, Mission 22 shipped that to us from Texas and Mark Bayless nominated Michael for this memorial. And Mark Bayless is with the Valor Clinic Valor Foundation. Clinic He's Foundation. been on this show, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. and um, it's it's in Lee Heighton on the, it's called the Veterans. Sergeant Stanley Hoffman Boulevard. They recently named that whole track of ground to the Heighton Memorial, Veterans, Veterans Memorial area. Mm -hmm. So it's, they have a, w, a World War II monument there. They have Michael's statue there. They have a Navy anchor. And uh, last year they put a service dock. So it's really being built up to honor our military. Okay, and we have 30 seconds to go. I want you both to know that I have stopped there more than once, yeah, and I have prayed there, and Thank I have you. prayed for your son there, and I didn't even know you back then, but well. I, knew, I knew of his story. God bless you both. I Thank admire you. you greatly. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for sharing this story, and let's all as a community work to fight to be a part of the solution. Thank you very much. Don't complain about it. Do something about it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>